everybody, Brogar here. We're going to be taking a quick look at a game I had the other night on Vikendi. Just wanted to do a little analysis and breakdown of macro and micro aspects to this solo game. So obviously I'm hot dropping because I can't help myself and we're, we chose Castle. This is my favorite place to hot drop on Vikendi to be perfectly honest. And uh, I think it's it's not too RNG actually. First guy, I just got down a second before and I hit my shots. One of his bolts canceled. Not much to it. I've been doing lately that's a little bit better than since I got back into PUBG has been that I've just been especially the night that I played these games I just slowed it down a lot more I didn't YOLO push as much and I just held my peaks and pulled my pulled my shot back or pulled my peak back after you know I wasn't already hitting them if, if my first shots weren't good or honestly just because I didn't want to hold my peak for too long The reason why is because it's pretty easy to shoot somebody who's peeking the left or right side of a window. I don't want to make him, you know, pre-fire, pre-aim those windows too often. I've been punished way too many times for just running at people lately. And I did a good job, like I said, just chilling for a second. Figuring it out, maybe trying to get a peek or seeing if he will make a mistake. Something that I watch pros do a lot, I, I do in this kill, and it's a, it's a really small thing, and it has such a huge impact on consistently beating somebody to the draw on a gunfight. So this guy, I we both hurt each other. We both know where each other is about to peek from, generally speaking. But what I did was... He, held, he was holding a peak, which, you know, often there's an advantage on. But what ended up happening was he was holding a peak on me. And instead of, instead of uh, peaking him as soon as I could get vision on him, I just walked across the field of view. And that is a risk because if they pre-fire, they can get you. They could hurt you right there. But what that allowed me to do is know exactly where he was. And then to make him have to guess when I'm going to peek. And this is why you'll see pros pre-firing constantly. in in uh, So whenever they play, they'll pre-fire, especially close quarters. They'll just pre-fire a ton and then they'll back up and reload their gun. Because you can't really tell when somebody's going to peek. You just got to get kind of lucky um, on that peek. So I knew exactly where he was. I could pre-aim through the column right in front of me. I pre-aimed and I shot him right in the head. It was very fast, but I had a significant advantage as soon as he continued to hold that peak. If somebody moves past you in the way I did, I would suggest completely pulling your peak and resetting the fight. This guy came in because he wanted to get a, be a part of things and he felt left out. So um, I generally didn't want to just like i said run at him because these stairwells are actually kind of hard to push down and up if somebody's holding the peak from the bottom or the top you're kind of dead if you're running down them or up them so i took my time i waited and you know what i've been 
really trying to get into these damn windows and I figured I could. I just needed to get my crouch jump right and I finally got into one and I, this guy vaulted out at the wrong time because it's really hard to tell if somebody's ho ho hanging out in a window. So I would, if you're gonna learn anything from this kill, you should be jumping into windows to get peeks on people beneath you because you will get a ton of kills like this. If you're not jumping in windows in Pachinki, if you're not jumping in windows on boot camp, you are missing out on kills that you could get that are very easy because it's really hard to tell when you're in them. So in solos, things are a little different than when you're playing duos or squads. Usually when you've cleared space, you've killed at least two people in a duo or four people in a squad. Generally speaking, it's a lot easier to understand how much how much space is created from taking those people out. But in solos, that that comfort doesn't exist. There can always be a sleuthy, sneaky son of a bitch hiding in a corner or doing something weird, or there could always be a vulture that comes into the late the hot drop late and tries to clean up the rest of the people there. So you always got to be hyper vigilant. You always got to be aware of every angle and every peak and every, you know, every place somebody could chill because people actually do do that in solos. So here I'm taking my sweet time clearing castle and looting in castle because it's way too easy for me to sprint in one direction, have somebody hear me and then just get blasted in the side or back. You hear that? That's a sneaky sleuth who's been hanging out in the top of castle since I've been murdering people on the other side of it. Let's see how Brogar handles this. So I'm aware of the f where he is and he can't, it would be very difficult for him to be able to hold both staircases, but I'm coming for him. So I go to the far staircase and then once I get up there, I start slowly, methodologically clearing every angle I can, sl slicing the pie, trying to figure out where this guy is because he is very quiet and he does not want to give up any advantage that he's gained by being still and silent. I found you trying to sneak down the staircase. No, no, no. So something that's really important when you're going to clear a place like this, you need to be thorough. You need to be patient. And the way that I would suggest you do it is you just Go up to wherever you're going to lean and look around. Don't hold your peak and walk around the corner to look because they're going to shoot you because they're going to hear you move into that corner. When you get up to the corner, pre-aim where you want to, you know, where you think the most likely chance of seeing a t uh, an enemy is on the other side of whatever you're looking through and just tap, tap the lean button. Just tap it and you'll look and then you go right back to cover. It's very, very hard for anybody to be able to kill you that f with, with you just tapping the lean button unless they're pre-firing the hell out of that spot. But you're not going to peek if they're doing that. Just tap a little, do a little quick peek, and then, and then you'll know. Are they peeking? Or are they not peeking? If they are, now they're in the situation where they've lost the element of surprise, and they either start pre-firing you or uh, they move and you pretty much now have peekers advantage to fight with and they don't know when you're gonna peek. So it might be good, it might be bad. I usually don't advocate to re-peek the same peek multiple times, but it's doable. Just take that little quick, quick lean peek is what I want you to do.
So I find this car, this Dacia, it's somebody you pulled up to this little compound. I tried to sneak around and make sure I didn't get blasted by the guy who was defending it. He didn't seem to care when I saw his car, if he was there, or more likely he wasn't there at all. Where I decided to go was somewhat central. From my experience on playing Vikendi, it seems like being on the edge of the map in the early game, except maybe the very most initial circle, seems like an absolute shit show. I cannot tell you how many people just play edge on this map and there is so much cover that almost everybody makes it in, um, most likely makes it in unless they're getting hard gate kept. So it's like that edge becomes just this crazy ladder third party shit show and you need to make sure that you avoid that if you don't want to get um, you know shot in the back. It's your call. You know, you can pop off some crazy games if you can clear up the edge But I'd say the math is bad So when you approach a compound uh, In solos you have you literally have no idea whether or not somebody's hiding in a corner in it so and honestly, if you drive up in a car, there's a lot of people who are just going to beeline sprint at your compound and you're going to be in a fight no matter what. So when you pull up in solos, duos, squads on a new compound, you need to make sure you clear it really, really well. Um, but that the initial aspects in solo, you cannot possibly know how many people could be actually attacking you, how many people could be in there. So you need to establish, and you should do this in any capacity um, when you take a new compound, establish a foothold. So the first building that you can get into, that's your foothold. The closest building, the closest piece of 360 degree cover, that's your foothold. That's where you start to figure out, okay, what the hell's going on in this compound? Do I hear anybody? Do I see anyone running at me? You know, uh, and if you do, go, you know, go into your combat mode. But trying to figure out what the next steps are, you need to have a platform to do that and you need to establish a foothold to do that. From there, you start to move methodologically through the compound clearing each aspect of it so what i did was i found a foothold and i didn't do it very well because i felt very vulnerable as i got out of that car and i went for the best piece of cover i could i went for that big house because that big house has good angles and i have places to move to if somebody pushes my building so i got in that building and that that was my foothold not the best choice because if somebody was there while I was running to that compound, I could have gotten blasted. But I went through it. I thoroughly checked it. Matter of fact, I thought somebody was underneath my window and I threw some Molotovs down there and I burned some snow. Big deal. But at least I was being careful. I actually don't think it would be wrong for you to get into this compound, uh, work your way into the best building and literally just stay there checking your angles um, from first floor, second floor, uh, the entire time. Every time you start moving from building to building within the compound, you open up uh, a chance for you to get caught out running. But that's not to say that you shouldn't move to position in different places in your compound according to the dynamic aspects of, the, of whatever's going on around you. If you hear gunfights somewhat nearby and they're on a different corner or if you just want to even get a peek up the hill so that you know you just have a f intuition or the circle is telling you th information about the likelihood of somebody coming down one different one side or another then change positions just make sure you're not just beeline sprinting out in the open wherever you go One of the scariest things in solos is having to drive a car somewhere and stop. It doesn't matter if it's in a building or if it's stopping somewhere on the outside at a geographical position. You have no idea if somebody's running at you as soon as you get out of that car. And that's exactly what I did with this guy because I have a significant advantage. I know where he is. He's pulling up in a friggin' Dacia. And I did a bad job telegraphing my, my existence by throwing a Molotov, which he could see you know where that's coming from <clears throat> bullets probably would have been better but at the end it's just like 
he's kind of clueless and in the significantly defensive position as soon as he gets out of that car. Just make sure wherever you're stopping, you're pretty sure that there's going to be a low chance of people being there. That's uh, always going to be a chance. Or you're trying to take a hard position like a building immediately and clearing it so that you have a defensible position. This compound ended up getting RNG for a lot of the game. And this guy heard me fighting and he wanted to come get a, a piece of me because why not take the be a better compound in this um, map? It's not fun to fight against a suppressed M24 when they're when you're looking at the woods, uh, the uh, like a wooded area, and you only have a 2x. So I was not about to to be having a peak battle with this guy. The only time I, the time I took a shot at him from the compound, he was moving, and it actually was huge. That he was moving on such high ground, so that I knew exactly where he was because I actually didn't know he had moved it. He was actually in the forest. I kind of thought he was at my southeast compound. So I picked up a new helmet because he hit me in the neck, almost killed me, and then I pushed into the forest because I actually figured he'd be eyeballing the compound, and he was, and I got a flank on him because I had this little dip, this little defilade area where I could kind of sneak in and get really close to him, and he I, he noticed me like the second before I opened up with, with my burst, and he, I mean, that just shows you the, the fraction of a second of, of not being aware of your surroundings, can how it can impact your game. Never forget, smoke your loot when you're trying to pick it up in solos because I guarantee you people are chasing shots. People are going to shoot you in the back as soon as you start to loot. And looting is one of the most vulnerable aspects of the game. So be ready. Always have some smokes handy so that you can do that. In this case, I had to actually re-smoke myself because I used a med kit while I... Because somebody hit me with an SLR in the smoke. Feels bad, but... So what I did was I just held a smoke out, primed it, and then switched guns to drop it right on top of me. So I just re-smoked my position so that I had more time to loot. So I said it before and I'll say it again, Vikendi is an edge map. Everybody is chilling on the edge. Like it will surprise you how many people show up after you kill one person on the edge. Cause there's like, I, it will just stun you. I, I guarantee you. Your chances of getting shot in the back if you're in a shit sandwich is really high. So I had centered up originally. I no longer have the center because we knew it was going to happen at some point. I centered really early to just avoid getting third party throughout the course of the game. My compound is still in this circle. So what i do in this situation is i am now the edge keeper of the north northwest and northeast edge of the circle i'm gonna do my best to prevent anybody from walking into my compound i'm gonna do my best to third party as many people who are fighting on the sides and um and just set myself a platform or staging area for the late game to move south I hear a guy shooting with an SLR up here. So there's two people fighting on the edge. And when there is an opportunity to third party in this game, it's really good to do it and try to do it well and kill somebody because it offers up space in the direction that you move to third party. You know the chances of that guy being in a, if he's shooting a DMR like this guy with the SLR is, he's shooting at range, which means he's not getting, he's not in a fight with somebody within 10, 15 meters of him. So me going up behind him, shooting him in the back of the head with an M24 means, you know, probably within 50 plus meters of, of him up at his spot, there might you know there's lower chance of people being there because he had been moving around that area for a while never gotten a close range fight so unless there's a really sneaky snake up there when i go take him out i know i've cleared space on that northeast edge and i can wrap back away from the guy he's shooting at and we'll have created all of this space in that area ideally not always the case if there's a snake but generally speaking if you can third par party people on the edge like that you're creating yourself space to move with at later circles.
guy was on the wrong rooftop and I just happened to, sp to spot the poor bastard. But the M24 is a freaking laser beam, dude. You just shoot it right at their head at that range. For the most part, you should. I shoot over people's head with the M24 all the time. I really advocate if you're going to shoot, if you feel like they're kind of far away, start by shooting at the top of their head or just the just the millimeter above their head cuz this gun shoots really fast and usually you're you're you don't need to adjust for any kind of drop on it This was almost the mistake of my game. <laughs> I was contemplating going back to this body to get a goddamn extended magazine for my G36. I remember thinking about it. Oh, G the G36 extended mag might be relevant. Dude, I almost died going for an extended mag to somebody who was sneaking, who snuck in on this edge. I'm very fortunate I had that three helm on, otherwise I would have been dead here. Just notice how many people showed up on this edge all of a sudden. I just almost got killed by a guy, and then I just saw a guy running to a rock, and then I saw a guy running in behind him. Three people came in on this edge all of a sudden. Just take note of that. That is really common on this map. Same area. within All within, what, 100, 150 meters? Make that four people. This guy came into my combo. Something I didn't notice until watching that Molotov throw right there uh, that's actually pretty relevant is after you throw a Molotov, don't literally just take your gun out and just wait for you know a second or so unless you need to med because Molotovs, what they do more than kill people is they move people. So get your gun ready. Me reloading there wasted an opportunity. Kill number 12 was, was just kind of a result of me checking my back, which is always something you should be regularly doing if you can. But he was kind of out in the open in a in an easy to kill position. But he probably was moving toward me because he heard me shooting and he thought he could he could make that move now. So I checked my back and I just blasted it really quick. I'm gonna take this peek and I'm gonna try to figure out. I'm gonna put it in slow motion. I want to talk about this. This is a really relevant something I talk about on stream a lot. Is is this peek and why it was a really bad peek on my part. So I came back to check on this guy and he had changed positions and I moved up and I'm where I moved up I was a little exposed if he was peeking from that spot already so it was I already was in a bad position to start because um, if he was peeking from the shed that I originally saw him go to I was way out in the open I would have taken two three tags at the least so but I saw him and he had moved back to his original little hut and I saw him on the back corner and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go for the shot. He saw me too, and you should always presume that somebody who's facing you sees you as well. Because if they didn't, you're still in an advantageous position because they don't know what the hell's going on. And if they did, they're gonna pre-aim you. They're aiming as much as you're about to aim too. So he started peeking at the, at the spot that I was gonna aim from. And you'll notice, I didn't really take my time with my pre-aim. I pre-aimed a little bit, but it wasn't a very good pre-aim. I leaned out. If you check when you when you watch these this repeat itself, you'll see I over peaked. I came out further than I should have and, and further than I needed to, making me an easy shot. And then I had to flick in order to even take a shot. And I shot between his head and the wall. 
wasn't very good. I did it too fast. I overpeaked. It just was, it was impatient on my part. It was overconfident on my part. If I took my time with my pre-aim for a second there and made sure that my peak was really tight, it would have been, even if I missed, it, I wouldn't have taken a chest shot because all I would have been showing with that right shoulder peak would have been my head and arm for the most part. So take note of that and and just take your time with a peak like this. If this guy's holding the peak and you got an M24, make sure you pre-aim it well. And if, even if you, another option is just do a quick peak with your pre-aim, see if your pre-aim's good. He's not gonna hit you if you have a tight peak. So the guy that was in my compound ended up just making a mistake and running it, he ran at me through the blue. So he was taking a bunch of damage. He did a good job. But I think I was just in an advantageous position for the spray down. The last guy, I knew where he was. He was hiding behind a rock and I had seen him sleuthing around. He just wasn't making any, any, making any peaks. So I fortunately didn't get shot in the back or third party by him and it's a good lesson. If you're the last of three people, if you hear the other guys fighting, try to get the third party. It will have an easy win. So I ended up looking around in the right areas. I saw him move and he ended up just hanging out prone and that is probably not the best play at the end of the game you kind of gotta fight at some point and i just saw him hiding in the grass pre-aimed him through the wall and then my pre-aim was good and i just hit him gg it was a fun game it was a lot of fun for me hope this helps you guys with some uh decision making and understanding of how some of the micro macro aspects of a solo game can go down especially the one in relationship to vikendi